In this short video, I want to uh, investigate how to make plots, uh, so animated plots, three-dimensional plots, and contour plots for solutions to uh, common solutions to partial differential equations. So for example, in the 1D wave equation, a typical solution might look like this. Um, so 3 sine of 5x over l times cosine 5 pi v times t over l for the height of the string. So let's just look at what this might uh, look like as a function of time. And so normally we would use the plot function. So we would say plot 3 sine of 5 pi x. I'm just going to put l equal to 1. Cosine of 5 pi. I'll also put v equal to 1. Um, so cosine of 5 pi t. And I might want to plot that for x from 0 to 1 where the string is uh, pinned down. This is also a function of t here, so if I were to try and plot this, it wouldn't make any sense. If I put t equal to 0, uh, then this will work. Let me fix the plot range. Let's make the plot range be from negative 3 to 3, so that nothing, uh, so I can see the whole plot. Okay, so if I look at t equal to 0, the initial conditions, it might look something like this. If I want to look at any general t, then I can use the animate function. So now I just wrap animate around my plot and uh, choose now an arbitrary t and let t go from 0 to, oh, I don't know, 2. Let's see what happens. And so now this animates my solution as a function of time, so I can see that, indeed, this is a wave uh, fluctuating up and down. I can slow this down if I want, or you can pause and use the slider. It's kind of like manipulate, um, except now it just animates it for you automatically. There's another way to view this solution which is to look at it just not as an um, animation, but look at the uh, space and time all at once. So you could use plot 3D. So let me grab the same function I had up here. So I'm going to plot in three dimensions my solution to the wave equation. For x go from 0 to 1, and t go from 0 to 2, for instance. Um, and in this case, it's going to be useful to label the axes so that I know what's going on. So let me label the axes. The first one is x, the second one is t, and then this is the height of the string y. So then I evaluate that and I get a three-dimensional plot. Again, you can see the x and the t and y here, so you know kind of orient where you are. So if I maybe look at it so that t is moving to the right. So now this is the solution x as a function of t for various times. Um, and again, you see this wave that's fluctuating up and down. For a wave solution, it's not as obvious to look at it in three dimensions. Uh, it's a little bit more obvious to look at it as an animation. Okay, so now let's look at the solutions to the one-dimensional heat equation. So in the one-dimensional heat equation, a typical solution might look like this. Now it's a sine function times an exponential. Uh, let me set some things... So let me set alpha equal to 0.1. Uh, so alpha is the, say, the thermal diffusivity constant. And so now I want to look at solutions to this heat equation to see what this looks like. Let me first do a plot in three dimensions. So let me do plot 3D of sine of 5 pi x. Again, I'll set L equal to 1. And then the exponential of minus alpha 25 pi squared times t. Let me plot that in three dimensions from x go from 0 to 1, which is where the bar is, and t goes from 0 to uh, 0 0.5, for instance. And just to make sure I see everything, I'll say plot range all, uh, and that makes sure that I can see the whole plot, and I'll label the axes. The x-axis is x, the t-axis is t, and then this is the temperature u. Okay. So now I look at this solution to the one-dimensional heat equation, and so I see at t equal to zero, I initially had a sinusoidal temperature profile along the bar, and now as time goes to uh, larger and larger time, then the sinusoidal profile damps out, um, essentially goes away, and the whole bar sits at temperature equal to zero at late times. Let's also look at this uh, via an animation, through an animation. So let me grab my function here and say plot that function from x go from 0 to 1. And 
I'm going to fix the plot range now to make sure it goes from negative 3 to 3. Uh, and so I want this to be an animation for all time, so I'll wrap animate around it. So I'll animate from t goes from 0 to 0.5. And we see that indeed as t goes to larger and larger time, um, our initial profile, sinusoidal profile, damps out exponentially fast. Okay, so that's doing kind of what we expected. So that's two ways to view a solution, say, to the heat equation. One is with a three-dimensional plot, the other was with an animate. Um, one is more appropriate for kind of just looking at it static, the other one is looking at an animation. Okay, for our final example, let's look at the two-dimensional Laplace equation. And so a typical solution to the two-dimensional Laplace equation might look like this. So it's, say, some Fourier sum over uh, a sine times a cinch function. And we'll see what this actually corresponds to in just a second for boundary conditions. Let me set a equal to 1 and b equal to 1. Um, and then I'll write my function, the temperature, uh, the steady state temperature, as a function of x, y, and some maximum number of terms in the Fourier series as a sum of 4 divided by, and since I want odd, I should do 2m plus 1 here to make sure I only get odd integers. Um, and then sine of 2m plus 1 pi x divided by a, and then I have cinch of 2m plus 1 pi y divided by a, divided by cinch of the same thing, except with y equal to b. Okay, and I want that sum to go from m equal to 0 to n max, and maximum number of terms that I include. So let's just see what this corresponds to. So this corresponds to um, and it's some boundary conditions at y equal to b, so let's include 40 terms in that boundary condition uh, for that sum. Let's look at a plot from x from 0 to a of the boundary condition and make sure we fix our plot range 0 to 2. Okay. And so if we do that, what we see is uh, at that top boundary at y equal to b, it looks like we're setting the potential equal to a constant. So this is, say, the steady state temperature um, to the Laplace equation uh, for a rectangular region where the top edge is at some fixed temperature and all the other ones are at 0. Okay, so now let's look at what a plot of the solution looks like. So we can look at a three-dimensional plot, for instance. Uh, and so we want to plot u of x, y, and let's include 40 terms, because that seems pretty reasonable. x goes from 0 to a, y goes from 0 to b. Let's make sure we include everything here, plot range all. And so now this is what our solution looks like. So again, at y equal to b, up at the upper edge here, uh, it looks like the uh, temperature is initially constant, um, or is constant at that boundary, and then the temperature decays to come to zero um, on the other edges. And so the temperature looks roughly like this, as a function of position inside of the rectangular boundary. Okay. Kind of like what would happen if you stretched a membrane um, across the edges there. So a three-dimensional plot isn't the only way of looking at this solution. We can also take the same information, and instead of doing a three-dimensional plot, we can do a contour plot. And so one of the advantages of a contour plot is then you don't have to worry about manipulating things in three dimensions. You can just see the contours of your solution. And so now the contours are labeled here with the various temperatures. So these are isotherm contours. Um, of our particular solution. So we can see that uh, we're seeing similar behavior. The temperature is initially 1 up at the boundary, the upper boundary, and then it decreases as you go further away from the boundary to coming to 0 around the edges. Okay, so those are some different ways you can visualize solutions to partial differential equations.